Have you ever had your phone taken at security? Ever wondered what happens to it? It's either hooked up to a forensics machine where loads of personal data could be extracted, or more often, it's just copied outright so that all your data can be analyzed later. Those who take it get access to your photos, the passwords of your email accounts, all your private messages, and even your 2FA seats that you use to log into other accounts. In our last video, we talked about tips for traveling so that you can protect your data if asked to hand over your device. One thing that we mentioned is phone pair locking. Phone pair locking is creating a trusted relationship between your phone and your computer so that no other computer that the phone plugs into will ever be able to manage the device. Michael Perklin is the former CISO of what used to be Shapeshift, and he's a digital forensics expert. He explained to me that there are ways to lock your phone to your own computer so that no forensics machine will ever be able to connect to it in future or analyze its contents. Someone would still be able to look through your phone manually, but phone pair locking prevents the invasive analysis done by a machine, and it also prevents any copy being made of your phone so that it could be analyzed later. In this video, we'll take you through the step-by-step -step process of how to phone pair lock your device. Keep in mind that this particular tool is only available for iOS devices. Is it possible to lock a, an Android graphene phone with a certain computer as well? To my knowledge, there is no analog with Android devices. One of the reasons being it is much easier to root or jailbreak your Android device than it is a iOS device. Rooting your phone allows users to override certain controls put in place by hardware manufacturers and carriers. And because getting around these controls is so easy on Androids, controlling a device with phone pair locking also won't work. Once you have full access to the device, you can get around any kind of a pair lock. But iPhones are highly secured devices, and enhancing those controls with a phone pair lock is a great way to stop forensics machines snooping on your device. Now, a big warning before we get started. This process will delete everything on your device. This is best undertaken when you have a brand new iOS device that you've never used before, or you're willing to wipe it completely. You won't even be able to restore your phone from a backup, because that backup will be of a phone that doesn't have pair locking enabled. You have to be prepared to set up the device as brand new. If you're prepared for that, then let's get started. To enable this process, you'll put your phone into something called a supervised state. A supervised state means that the holder of the handset is not the one that is ultimately in control of the handset. For example, a company might buy thousands of phones for their employees. It's common for IT to own all the devices, and they allow employees to use the devices in a limited capacity while they are still employed at the company. This is an example of a supervised state. They want to manage them all easily, and they don't want all the employees to muck around with all the settings. iOS created a tool called the Apple Configurator to make it easy for corporations to lock down devices. We can actually use the same tool to lock down our own devices, which means that forensics machines won't be able to access our data anymore. First, choose the computer that you want to lock your phone to, and download the Configurator app from the Apple Store onto that computer. Plug your phone into the computer. In Configurator, click your phone and then click on the Prepare button. You're going to put the phone into a supervised state by checking Supervised Devices. Also make sure you check Allow Devices to Pair with Other Computers. We'll block it later at the profile level. Next, click Do Not Enroll in MDM. You'll be prompted to sign into Apple School Manager or Apple Business Manager. Click Skip. Now you'll be prompted to create a new organization. You have to create sort of a fake company name, or maybe you just use your last name or whatever it is. Note that this is the name that will appear at the top of your phone going forward. We'll talk about why this is important at the end. Leave everything else blank. You'll select a new supervision identity. Click Next. Leave the next settings as they are and click Prepare. Put in your password to update your certificate trust settings and click Update Settings, which will wipe your device. When that's complete, your phone is now in a supervised state. The next step is to create a profile with your desired settings and then load it onto the device. An organization would create a profile for all of the devices that that organization would manage. For an individual's case, you would just create one profile for the one device that you want to manage. Under File, select New Profile and name your new profile. Under Security, you'll find the setting to control when the profile can be removed. You can select either Never, which means that no other computer will ever be allowed to pair with the device again. Only that laptop will be able to 
change settings on that device. And if that laptop is gone or inaccessible for whatever reason, that phone is essentially locked. It, it can never be changed. Or you can select with authorization, which means that you will set a passphrase to authorize any future devices to pair. If you allow a passphrase to manage the device, then whoever has that passphrase will be able to pair with your phone and download the data from it. They may compel you to give that password they may find it in your password database. It's up to the individual viewer to weigh the pros and cons of each of the different options and choose the one that makes the most sense for them. Under the restrictions section, click configure. You're going to get a ton of different settings that you can change. There are probably a thousand different settings and they're incredibly granular. Uh, if you don't fully understand the impact of an individual setting, I would recommend not playing with it. The setting that we're focused on for this tutorial is about pairing. You want to uncheck the box that says allow pairing with non-configurator hosts. Once you uncheck this, it will require the exact same computer that you use to set up the device to manage it. When you exit the new profile window, you'll be asked to save your new profile somewhere. Once it's saved, the next step is to upload the profile onto your phone. Right click your phone and select add profiles and load your newly saved profile. Your device is now successfully pair locked with that specific computer. And if you plug the phone into another computer, you'll get this message. This also means that no forensic analyst will be able to connect your device to their machine in the future. Even if you give them the pin number for the device and now the iOS device is unlocked in their hands, if they try to forensically copy the data off the phone, it will not work because of the pair lock. It is possible if the device is unlocked for someone to retrieve a key off of a live phone. This is not easy. 99% of digital forensic analysts would not know how to do this. And if they are aware of it, it would still be quite difficult for them to do. So pair locking your iPhone is actually quite a robust tool for protecting your privacy. Now, the name of the fake company you create during the setup process is important. Whichever name you choose shows up in the about section of your phone, where it says this iPhone is supervised and managed by X. This may or may not be useful to you at a border crossing to say that, well, I can't unlock this device. Look, it's managed by them. That also means that putting your own name in there might not be useful. I could say that this device is managed by Perkland. Well, I am Perkland. If you have your own name in there, they could try to compel you to unlock your phone. Another thing to keep in mind is that the computer you've paired with is the key to unlocking your device. If you're traveling with both your laptop and your phone together, now your laptop can be used to unlock the phone. So perhaps leave one of them at home. If you don't bring the key with you, then there's no way to unlock the phone with you. Before you dive into this process, be aware that phone pair locking could also have unintended consequences. If the forensic analyst is not able to copy the data off your phone. They may choose to seize the device entirely. So by enabling this pair locking, you may be saying goodbye to your phone. Ultimately, we are not lawyers and phone data may be legally obtainable by certain authorities at different border crossings. So please do your own research depending on where you're traveling. Talk to your lawyer and or a lawyer from the other region that you're crossing into to understand all the nuances and all your rights on both sides of the border. Phone pair locking could potentially be a useful tool in your privacy toolbox, especially if you need to keep data safe because you're a human rights worker or a journalist or you have access to other sensitive material. You can check out our other video for more tips on keeping your data safe while traveling. Wanting privacy is normal, so find a way to safeguard it in a way that works for your life. Ah!